This episode of Life Hacker is brought to you by Gamefly. Go to www.gamefly.com slash hacker for your free trial. Welcome to Life Hacker. Today we're talking about photography and your digital photos. To start off, we're going to recover accidentally deleted photos from your memory card. We're going to learn to paint with light at night. Create a DIY flash diffuser for better pictures and supercharge your current camera. We are going to learn how to compose a better photo. And give you some tips for taking better pictures with your smartphone. And of course, the downloads of the day. Let's get snapping. We all take so many digital photos these days, it's easy to lose track of them or wipe over them accidentally. You don't need to pay specialists though to get them back. Free software tools can let you recover your photos and not miss a single frame. Here's how. The tool we're going to use, Recuva, R-E-C-U-V-A, can find more than just photos, but it's easier to look through images rather than files when you know they're on a small SD card. Speaking of which, try to use Recuva directly with an SD card plugged into your desktop or laptop. You can connect over a USB cable, but Recover will work faster if it can read directly from your camera's memory card. Pick photos from Recover's main menu, then select the drive you're going to scan, which should be something like removable disk or whatever your camera card is named. You'll probably get a prompt from Recover saying it couldn't find anything on its first run, but that's fine. Allow it to do a deeper scan. In some cases, Recover will make your day and find exactly the photos you're looking for. In other cases, it'll find very, very old photos you can't believe still exist while missing those you wanted. It all has to do with where on your memory card your camera decided to start recording your images recently. If you want a kind of digital second opinion, try the geekier command line driven photo rec. Enter in what you want to look for and where, and photo rec automatically starts dumping everything it can find into a folder. You might occasionally see some half photos or some weird discolorations, but usually you get full, usable photos that you've been looking for. Now when your honeymoon photos get replaced by your night at the hockey game, you will be in far less trouble. One of the neat things you can do with your camera, just a point and shoot or a DSLR, is paint with light when you're outside in the evening. And you can do that as long as you have a camera with a long exposure capability, which is really anything uh, 30 seconds and upward, and a flashlight or some sort of glow stick or something that emits a significant amount of light that you can move around. It's best to do with this with two people, but you don't have to. Um, but it's definitely more fun with a friend and it's a lot easier to accomplish. So what you can do is set your camera to like a 30 second exposure or longer um, and then go ahead and move your light stick or flashlight or whatever in the face of the camera so that the main exposure is the light. And when you do that, it will show the light patterns that you make slowly through the photograph. And you'll have a neat pattern if you move it up and down or make a star or trace an object. Um, so you can come up with some really cool effects that way. And that's pretty much how you paint with light. Experiment, have fun, and you'll come up with some really awesome stuff. If you do any amount of photography, whether professionally or as an amateur, uh, you've probably figured out that a flash from a camera directly on the subjects is kind of ugly. It'll be kind of washed out, it's not really the nice color that you get from, say, without the flash, but sometimes you don't have a choice, sometimes you need the flash. So what you can do in those situations is diffuse the flash. Now you can buy diffusers for expensive cameras and their flashes and, and, and you can use those, but if you don't have your diffuser on hand or if you just don't want to buy a diffuser, you can use whatever you have on hand, like a plastic spoon or uh, a Kleenex, and you just sort of put it over the flash and then when you take your picture, hopefully it will do a much better job. Good evening. It's intermission time. Why don't you try Gamefly? Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service that offers you a choice from over 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. With plans starting at $15.95 per month, Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. 
Once you're done playing the game, simply send it back and Gamefly will send you the next game on your list. And if you really like the game, you can click Keep It on the Gamefly site and it's yours at a discounted price. Lifehacker fans can get a 15-day free trial when they go to www.gamefly.com slash hacker. You'll be supporting the show and you'll get to try some awesome games. It's showtime. So you bought your camera and technology has moved on and there's probably a lot of features you wish that it had that it doesn't. There are a couple open source projects though that can supercharge cameras like say my point and shoot or Adam's fancy camera over there uh, and give them more features. So one is called CHDK or Canon Hack Development Kit that you can install on something like this. Uh, point and shoot Canons, uh, it's a firmware replacement that gives a lot of other options. For example, uh, it can shoot in RAW mode, you can do time lapse, you can do a lot of interesting things that you can't do by default on a camera like this. Installing it's actually pretty easy. You can just check out their website and it will walk you through it, tell you if your camera's supported, and so on. On the other hand, you've got Magic Lantern. Yeah, Magic Lantern is a great thing also for Canon cameras, but in this case, DSLRs. And DSLRs are pretty souped up on the photography end, but for video, you can obviously have a lot more features than they offer. Things like zebra patterns and also monitoring sound more effectively. Uh, Magic Lantern offers a lot of things uh, that will make your camera a lot better for video, and it's really easy to install. It's custom firmware, but you load it each time you open the camera. Um, you just load it up just like you're installing a firmware update and then it loads the software right away. So it doesn't actually alter anything and it's perfectly safe to use. You can find more details on lifehacker.com uh, by visiting the link on your screen. There are a lot of good ways to compose a photograph. We're going to take a look at three today. One is using the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is really simple. You just split your photograph into three sections, whether it's uh, vertical or horizontal, and then you want to put your focus, your subject, in uh, one of those three sections. Generally, people find it more visually appealing to put it on the left side or the right side, but you can do it however you like. Whatever you think makes the most impact, you just want to make sure that your subject falls into one of those sections. The other thing you can do is use the Fibonacci ratio to compose the photograph and we've got the Fibonacci ratio on the screen right now and you want your subject to kind of be in where the swirl comes in in the center there. Um, so that's another way to get really visually appealing photographs. Another thing is, uh, is using the principles of short sighting. You want to make sure that if you have uh, your subject facing forward that you leave a lot of the space in front of their face and not so much behind them. So if you were composing a photograph and your subject's right here, you want the space to be in the direction they're looking um, rather than them here and then all this stuff behind them. But all of those rules are just ways to get you to uh, compose a better photograph with ways that have worked well in the past. What you want to do really when you're composing a photograph is decide, okay, what do I want to say with this picture? And you know, you may have a situation where you want everything behind your subject, where they may be facing that way, but what's really going on in the photograph, the important thing is what's happening behind them. So you have to figure out what is the best thing I can do with this photograph, how can I make this have the impact that I want to have, and then compose it that way. And if you think ahead, generally you'll have a visually appealing photograph in the way that you want. Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp and listen, mister, how are you fix your blades? I have a nice DSLR camera, but I never take it with me. On the other hand, I have a nice smartphone camera that I always keep in my pocket. Do you have any tips on how to take better pictures with my smartphone camera? So one of the most important things to remember when you're taking photos with your smartphone is that the basic rules of photography are even more important than they are with a normal camera. Adam went through some of the basics in good photo composition. You definitely want to pay attention to those. Um, things like using your light correctly are more important than ever. Right now it's evening outside. This would probably not be a good place to take a picture. We would want to go find some sun, make sure it's at our back and that our subject, we're facing our subject. Um, other things I like to do, there are some advanced camera apps. Uh, camera Plus for the iPhone is a good one, and Camera Zoom FX is one I use on Android. They help you change the appearance and color of your photos to make them look a little better. And uh, the last tip, if, if none of these are really working, is just to kind of embrace your camera's mediocrity. 
Um, a very popular app on iPhone called Instagram and a similar app on Android that I like called FX Camera let you take pictures using specific effects like making it look like an old Polaroid or making it look like an old toy camera and you can actually take some pretty cool shots with those uh, even if the light isn't great or if your camera is pretty bad. So um, try a few of those out, browse the Android market, browse the iPhone app store and you should find a few things that can help you take some better pictures. We're getting near the end, which means it's time for the downloads of the day. Okay, let's see what we've got. First up are DSLR Remote and Shutter Snitch, which are both iOS apps that can assist you in taking wireless photos with your DSLR camera. Next we have Camera Plus for iOS and Vignette for Android, which are both our current favorite mobile photography apps for each platform. Lastly, we have Aviary, which is a really robust online image editor. If you don't have Photoshop handy, you can load up Aviary in your browser and perform some pretty complex photo edits. Now you've got some great tips for taking better photos. We'll see you next time.